have to show yourself that you can do more than you think. That means you have to voluntarily take up difficult tasks. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I mean, I think that's kind of the thing with anxiety and fear is like you, uh, you should do the do. <laughs> like yeah. you going and getting in the tub and then doing the shower and then feeling that emotion. It's different. It's, it's what it should be. But when you when you try and think and rationalize yourself out of not doing it, yeah. you try and put yourself in the perspective of doing it and trying to feel what you think it would feel like. And I think to some degree, maybe you, I guess you probably think, and I'm not saying you, you specifically, but you, everybody. Yeah, the general we, you. Yeah, yeah, the general you. Uh, just think that you're smarter than how real life is you know yeah. <laughs> like you're, you got anything you're pretty sure life. that I figured it all out <laughs> <laughs> I've done it all this is gonna be cold and then warm and then done <laughs> there's yeah. nothing left to it yeah so and then you feel something out of that that thought but really that feeling is only anxiety and fear and then when you actually go through with something like your thing with the shower and like when I built my PC for the first time even like it's a it's a completely different feeling than being like oh I probably can't do this so I won't do this well yeah then you just prove that you can't do it and it's, <laughs> it's hard because it, we learn so much and we become habitual so much that I think the more times you're confronted with something like that and you decide not to do it because oh poor little me I can't do that you just keep reassuring yourself and then literally the fucking circuitry in your brain that makes you fire in that direction it gets stronger and you're more inclined to do it in the future yeah it's like no small matter yeah <laughs> and so it's, it's seriously hard to fucking break out of those cycles yeah. and i think that gets undermined it's like oh just be positive it's like that's not fucking advice no that's not fucking advice. <laughs> <laughs> like tell some guy who just got back from afghanistan and watched his whole platoon get blown up all of his best friends his brothers and it's yeah. like oh just be happy you gotta like, put a spin on this <laughs> <laughs> no it was it's well, for the best <laughs> at least now you are gonna deal with this and become stronger from it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's just what he wants to hear. Yeah, it's like fucking thanks. Yeah, great. <laughs> I think the people who don't understand is that you're gonna be anxious, mm. and you're gonna get stressed out, and you're gonna get depressed, and you have to somehow keep going, mm -hmm. even when you're so scared and you're so sad, or you're, whatever the thing you're feeling is, it's just erupting out of you, like, the whole world's falling apart around you, and you still have to go to work, <laughs> you still have to keep, like, it's just, it's crazy, and, um, I think we don't give people enough credit for the things that they do on a daily basis, the things people are dealing with, the, the real fucking suffering, I feel like there's a tendency in some of these be positive philosophies to completely undermine the real pain people feel in life. It's so intense. Mm -hmm. You expect people just to not be anxious about it? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Life is, is anxiety provoking. Yeah. So it's it's not this kind of like, you shouldn't be feeling depressed, you shouldn't be feeling anxious. Um, thing, we, we shouldn't be thinking that way. It's, we need to learn how to continue on regardless. I think that's what real courage is and what real like, you know, uh, perseverance is. It's like, it's, you're going you're gonna to be scared to death and you have to keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not that you're just not scared, or it's not that you're not anxious about it. Of course you're going to be fucking anxious about it. You're a human being. <laughs> like, it's crazy. You're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. That's crazy It's going to happen. Like, <laughs> yeah. You're going to try to milk this experience out for something. It's like, it's a huge leap of faith going mm -hmm. in the people. I mean, there's obviously a lot of our biology that propels us to eat when we get that hungry, right? Yeah. But, uh, but still, it's like, people do kill themselves, and uh, people who don't th do think about it a lot... And uh, I used to think that everyone thought about it, but I've I've heard people tell me that like adults say they've never actually thought about it before. So uh, I'm I wondering about that. I think that they have a different frame of mind about it. Like they have probably thought of killing themselves, but uh, maybe don't have the. I don't want to say self awareness. Well, well, maybe they just they never just, they actually just don't have, seriously considered it. Yeah, like every I think that everybody thinks about either killing themselves or maybe even everybody thinks about murder or something that's been mentioned too mm -hmm. and uh, I think that the difference between somebody who is suicidal and somebody who thinks about killing themselves is the pers perspective in their mind really yeah they might not feel they might it might just be like a, an intrusive thought to some people whereas thinking about killing yourself is something that you sit down and consider for yeah uh, 15 minutes or whatever. yeah or maybe months for some people. Yeah, well, exactly. It's crazy. And so, yeah, the whole fucking... 
if what we're being specific here, we're critiquing that whole life is great, be positive all the time attitude. Mm. Yeah, I think we hammered that to death pretty good. <laughs> it, I think it's crazy that uh, I haven't been to war yet. I feel like I'm a 24 year old man. Things are getting sketchy. It's crazy. <laughs> I feel like it's gonna happen. Yeah. Like, how many. And, uh, you know, I'm only using men because throughout history it's almost always been men. It's probably still mostly men. Um, I don't think that's because of social construction. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I think it's crazy that I haven't seen combat yet. You know, I feel like so many boys were just would have been off to be warriors or something throughout history. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's just like, it's got to be a a matter of time before I'm fucking seeing some kind of war. And so, like, fuck it, I should probably enjoy roofing a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) That's what you'll be thinking about, back home roofing. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Oh, I'd still rather be roofing, stuck in this trench, whatever. Oh, I'll be positive. (laughs) Fuck off. It's fucking, it's just, it's a one-sided view of life. And, like, it's just like the completely negative view of life. They're both one-sided. It's like... If you can't walk with a foot on each side and you understand the tragedy and you understand how it can be great and meaningful and fulfilling, you know, then then you're able to live properly and, and, and well-tempered and with your feet on the ground and realistically, you know? Yeah, obviously, you gotta know what, know the one to understand the other. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta dip your toes in both. You gotta mm-hmm. have both in your life or you're not a full person. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Your beard's looking nice. What? Your beard's looking nice. Really? I still think it looks as shitty as ever. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yours is looking nice. Oh, thanks. It's looking really nice. Appreciate that. You look like Mark Morton right now. Actually. Mark Morton? Yeah. yeah I've, actually, I've, been, I've been back on a nostalgic Lamb of God kick. Yeah, have you? Yeah. Just like because, like, uh, Yeah, I've been listening to, um, well, just a lot of Philadelphia, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, the, the live Philadelphia. Fair enough. And then I threw in Sacrament the other day for a listen, and I was like, hey, you know, there's a lot of, because uh, I used to really love Ashes of the Wake the most. Yep. Um, but there's tons on Sacrament that sounds wild like that. I love Sacrament. People yeah. gave it a lot of flack when it came out, but Sacrament was a It's just one. really well produced. Yeah. I, think, I think people like the really grungy, shitty sound. Yeah, that shitty it's band. more of a mainstream more, metal. Yeah, and so then once they had that level of high quality sound, they just, you know, they send it into the kind of band that could open for Metallica mm-hmm. just based on what their CDs Black sound like. Or Heaven and Hell, I guess. Yeah, whatever, so... <clears throat> But uh, yeah, the music's great. It's very dark sounding. Mm. It's very emotively dark. I find it's got a dark vibe. Anything new lately? Anything new? Yeah, for music. For music, I've been toying around with the idea of making a just riffing metal band called Killdozer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's probably been a metal band name. Killdozer. Yeah, it's probably. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't. But I've I've learned like so two of my friends are in bands like Kirk and James and they both just played shows on Friday night that just went by and they didn't even go on stage until midnight. And uh I thought about being in their shoes and I was like, Fuck that <laughs> I don't like missing sleep. I really no. I really I don't like fucking up my sleep it's, schedule. It's bad. Yeah, I don't feel good for days. Mm-hmm. Like, if I miss a night of sleep like that, I fucking, it takes me days. I'll be, like, in the middle of the next work week still feeling off. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm being a pussy. Maybe I've lost my fire I had for it originally. But I still feel like I, I'm compelled to play music in a certain way. And and, uh, and I love just playing heavy riffs. So I'm just, like, I don't really care that much anymore. I'm not taking it so seriously. I just, like... Someday, if I have a home studio, I'll fucking write some riffs and yeah. put them on the internet. But so you get to the point where that's all that matters. Yeah, I just <laughs> fucking you know, if I can get some guys who want to play some heavy riffs with me, and yeah. like I'll fucking do it. But I'm not like really trying to get behind organizing all that stuff. It, it consumes your whole life, and I don't know if I'm willing to do that with my life anymore. So I'm just. You know, I my hat goes off to the people who keep hammering at the music the whole time. You know, like uh, it's like I don't mean to undermine them sticking with it. You know, which I feel like I took it that way when I was younger, and friends of mine stopped playing bands. I was like, oh, you should have stuck with it or whatever. But yeah. like, who want to say how they're supposed to live their life? You know, like you know. So I just feel like um, it's just I'm going in a different direction, and uh, but I hope that all my friends that. I love their music. I hope they keep making music and I hope they keep that fire for it because there's always that part of me that still wishes I was, you know, rocking it on stage all the time. But I just, uh, 
I value other things more than that for whatever reason, you know? But at one point, that was all I gave a fuck about. <laughs> like, I spent seven years doing everything I could to make that happen as often as possible. Yeah. Like, um, so I get it. It's fucking... It's amazing. But. Yeah, for the people who do it, definitely. Yeah. That's awesome. Good for them. Good for them. Mm-hmm. It's, like a, it's also, like, a big fucking act of rebellion, too, in a way, to, like, make that your sole effort in life because mm-hmm. everyone around you is getting a real job and yeah. having kids and doing that whole thing. And so, like fuck it just ha- be in a band you know it's like it's a crazy thing to to spend your life doing and it's for very unique creative special people and uh you know life would certainly be lost without those people doing what they do so yeah you know you can get government grants for losing weight what are you trying to say <laughs> <laughs> and on that note <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> How did you find out about that? Uh, we were talking about grants at work, getting some government funded. Wow. Yeah. You and, get grants uh, for losing weight. Yeah, you can get grants for fucking goddamn anything. The reason that popped what in my head. What would the money go to? Uh, I don't know, like gym membership or something, or a personal Jeez. trainer, or like Jeez. some crazy drink or something. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah, you can get all sorts. The government is actually not this evil thing, I don't think. Oh, really? I think it's got to be part <laughs> tell, of it. Tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting more conservative the older I get. <laughs> Sounds I, like Jordan Peterson. Yeah. I'm rubbing off on you. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's just made me consider these things in a way I never did before. Yeah. Um, but uh, like, it's not that it, there isn't corrupt elements to the government and corrupt people in the government. Yeah, that's, that's fucking, that's pretty without much... Without saying any specifics. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't need to mention anything. And, uh, but like, there's also like tons of funding going into the arts and, and into, uh, into fucking people losing weight and personal development and stuff. I know a guy who went and studied Cuban drums for like, a, or Brazilian percussion rather, for a number of months on the government's time because he wrote a good grant. And, uh, it's just shit that's available people don't even know about so there's fucking funding for all kinds of things but uh but you know it's a a lot of people chasing after a small pie so it's like it's not fair and it's not even and it's not equal and not everyone gets it and it's hard and uh you know life's hard some people just fucking die (laughs) (laughs) some people just fucking die Uh, so get over it be positive (laughs) just be positive yeah that's the answer that's the answer everything's positive government's positive (laughs) <coughs> yeah, but you know, I also have my beef with the government for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard not to. <laughs> hard not to. I wish they'd stop bugging me about that student loan. That'd, yeah. that'd be a nice move. Yeah, uh, I mean, just let it go for a few years. Eventually, they're gonna forgive it. It's just getting to that point, you know. I feel like it. You know, <laughs> I wonder if I'm jumping the gun on wanting to go back to school in the next few years. Or something like uh, uh, having should... a student loan doesn't affect you giving getting more student loan. That's true. They'll still give it to you. Yeah, if they're gonna. They give it still to me, want you to owe them. Yeah, for sure. I've gotten a lot of student loans. I've gotten like on four different occasions since high school, I think. Really? And they still keep giving it to me. So nice. Yeah, I wouldn't stress out about it. <laughs> okay. <no stress. laughs> Fucking, I drove, 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 <laughs> drove by a church on the sticks the other day. We're doing the roof out in Elmer's house, mm-hmm. and uh, drove by a church, and then they had a sign, and on the sign it said. Too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Too anointed to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's good. You know, that's that's a freaking... I, I notice that when people, religious people, because I'm not a religious person, when they get... Uh, I envy the fact that when they get really stressed out or depressed about something... They can just yell and blame God. I find that that's the way that they just relieve that most of the time. They're just like, fuck mm. you, God, and kind of a thing. Whereas, I don't feel like I, I don't feel like I have anything to blame except myself, which is probably better now that I think about it. Fuck religion. <laughs> well, here's an interesting point, too. Um, and uh, you can fully accuse me of being overly influenced by Pearson again. Because <laughs> I've watched all of his uh, Bible lectures. Okay, he has crazy. A series of lectures all about the Bible. So here's why you need to be a Christian right now. Andy. Okay, Christian. <laughs> I have a Bible in my hotel room, so I'm, yeah, get, I'm inclined read, to read it today. 
Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, so, um... Oh, fuck.